Okay, I was, I was born in Oakland. I was raised in Richmond, California. So I was born in 1941, so like Richmond had like shipyards and war workers and all this stuff for World War II. Uh, there was an old man that lived across the alley from me in Richmond, and his name was Abraham Lincoln Paulson. And he was a lettering artist. Hmm. And he lettered upstairs in the back room of his house, pretty much like I do today. And uh, he, would let, he would invite me into his studio, and I would just sit up there in the afternoons and just watch him work, you know, scritch, scritch, scritch with the pen, lettering away, doing like illuminated lettering, or doing like lettering names on diplomas, or uh, doing show cards for, uh, you know, stores, store displays and whatnot. And uh, he also did this stuff that he called trick lettering. One of them is the uh, Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, written upside down backwards using nothing but variations of the number two, you know? So he was like a little bit insane, you know, I like that. And he was very entertaining and it really, it really seemed like he was liking what he was doing. And so that made a huge impression on me. I, I guess I had this kind of artistic thing kind of going for a while. My dad was an architect and, or wanted to be an architect, never really was. And then uh, was a watercolorist and did etchings and whatnot for most of the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. So I had I had that kind of that. And then with Mr. then with Mr. Paulson, like when I finally came when push came to shove, I had to choose. You know, I I, I opted for lettering. I went to the College of Arts and Crafts. My art school experience was like more like fine arts because there was like fine arts like far outweighed graphic stuff on the curriculum. I mean there was. I took classes called Advertising Design. I took a, one class called, a, I think it was, it was called Design Forward. It didn't even have the word lettering in it, but it was like one semester of basic lettering. You know, the rest of it was like painting and throwing pots and going down to the Bay Farm Island and down to the East Shore and building sculptures on the beach and, you know, being a beatnik. <laughs> playing the bongos. <laughs> My first job, uh, out of school, I looked for a job for like three days in San Francisco, you know, looking for the chance to like do mechanicals and paste up for some cigar smoking twit, you know? And uh, after like three days, I went, I'm never going to work in this town, you know? And I like took a job in Kansas City mm -hmm. at Hallmark. And then, like, after I was there, like, living in Kansas City with an apartment, in my first week of work, I discovered that I'd suck at a career of, like, either doing rabbit cards or, like, hillbilly cards, you know, like a particular card genre, you know, for my career at Hallmark, if I could do that. And so, I wasn't very really adept at any of that. So they said, well, can you letter? And I, you know, like it was purgatory, you know? And I said, yeah, yeah, I can do that, you know? I should have rather do that than this other stuff, you know? They put me in the lettering department, and I had a knack for doing greeting card lettering. And some guy that worked with the lettering department, he picked me out of the lettering department to, to design casual typefaces for greeting cards. And so I did that, and I was having a ball. And at one point, while I was there, he managed to get them to hire Herman Zopf on a retainer to come to Kansas City and stay there. Right. So I got to like watch him, see him work, talk with him, ask him questions, and, you know. I think what I learned most from Herman Zopf is just what an amazing craftsman he was and how important craftsmanship is to the whole process. He would do like a he had these fine, fine point ballpoint pens, and he would like sit down with a piece of legal paper and start lettering. And Myra and I would be standing behind him, I'd be like, holy shit, you know? <laughs> the letters are like this big, you know? So caps, you know? I'd say like, you know, it's like drawing with a fine point ballpoint pen at like 10 point, you know? And we go like, well, you know, how can we draw so small? And he says, well, that's the size I intend for them to be used, you know, so that's the size I should see them at, you know. And I was like blown away by his craftsmanship. 
you know, it made me realize that you didn't just sit down and let her. You know, it's like if you're going to be like a good athlete, you don't just go out on the field and like do something heroic. You like to get in shape, you have to learn how to play the game, you have to learn all this other crap before you even get in the game, you know. And then lettering's the same way. It's like you just have to like keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. I'm like 67 years old and like sometimes I'm sitting up in my room and I do something and I go like, holy cow, this is great. And then I like look at it and I think like, I should have known this 50 years ago, you know? I knew mean, what's wrong with me, you know? There's like always more to discover. I worked at Hallmark. Mm -hmm. All the artists would like make their own Christmas cards every Christmas, you know, try to out weird each other, you know? So this was my Christmas card one Christmas. <laughs> Back then when everything was analog and there was no internet or anything like that, uh, and he wanted to do kind of artwork that was kind of hip, uh, the only way to get it was like, to go to, to go to parties and say, hey, how's, what's going on? You need an artist, you know what I mean? What do you do? And I met this guy that was the manager of the Doobie Brothers, and I think his name was Jim Welsh. We met at some party. We got loaded together. We met again at some other party. He said, you can want to do a job for me, you know? And I said, sure, you know? And this was like an album cover. I designed, I, the lettering design I got from, uh, the cover of an old Nebbiolo type foundry book, an Italian type foundry book, it was all kind of elegant like this, and so then I just decided what would it be like if it was like really fat, you know? And, uh, and that was the job. I didn't even feel part of like Rolling Stone when I was there, because I kind of, you know, I got a sec for, once Roger was there, he like, I became an, I, he made me an associate art director or something, and I was an associate art director for like, maybe two weeks. I said, you know, it was like Rolling Stone. And even then I like, couldn't stand to go in every day, you know. I said, I just can't, can't, can't keep coming in, you know. So then I became like their type designer and like I had to stay home, you know. <laughs> so when Roger came along, and Roger was like the first guy I ever met that was like really focused on typography for publications, like magazine typography. And uh, it makes makes you less money than doing advertising work, but like a, as a lettering person, it's like much more fulfilling. So that association with Roger is like what made me zero in on publications, I work for publications, just about exclusively now. And then it manages somehow to like skim off ninety percent of the bullshit, you know? <laughs> I mean, really. I mean, it's like, but like. Advertising jobs pay a lot more, or used to, you know? But like, still wasn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, the first, when, when I first started doing type for Roger, and it started off with type, the logo just came in kind of like offhandedly. You know, like I was working on the, doing the sketches for the type. Well, he asked me to do, try, to try to do a logo, and I was like, so freaked out about like messing with Rick Griffin's magnificent logo, you know, that like, my sketches are completely tortured, you know, and they were like only inching away from what he had done, you know? And Roger said, nah, that's not good. So I worked on the fonts for a long time, and it was all like pencil sketches, you know, tons and tons of pencil sketches. And then one day he said, why don't you take one of these fonts and see if you can work a logo up out of it, you know? And so the first Rolling Stone logo was worked up from the pencil sketches for one of their typefaces.